a demonstration of how to write a harmony line. Now a harmonic line will follow the same chordal structure as a bass line. So while our bass line might look after the root note of the chord, the harmony line or lines look after the other notes that belong to the chord. So if we're sticking with good old Mary had a little lamb in the previous examples, let's look at a number of ways that we can provide a harmony line. Now we already have our melody line. At today's performance, the role of the melody will be played by the flute, not a flute. We already have our bass line. At today's performance, the role of the bass will be played by the cello. Still not a cello, but closer. Now we need some instruments playing the harmonic role. Yep, let's go with some violins. We'll sound quite classical, period. -y. In this video, we'll look at two simple harmony ideas and two more complex ones. The first one, block chords. This is where our harmonic role and bass role work together in a vertical block. Think Lego or Duplo building blocks. They stack up in pitch and will often have the same rhythm. Yes, delightful. Secondly, block chords but with a syncopated feel. Now this is where we might have our bass line landing on the strong first and third beat and the harmonic roll will fill the gaps on the second and fourth beat. Again, this is a fairly simple harmonic line. Thirdly, an Alberti bass. Now this is a lovely pitch feature developed in the 1700s by Mr. Domenico Alberti. He liked the left hand pattern on the harpsichord. This is where we use all the notes of the chord. They're all played but they're broken up in a simple repetitive pattern that is made up of the lowest to highest to middle to highest of the notes of the chord. Essentially you're breaking up the chord and playing each note separately. Now in our Mary Had a Little Lamb, the cello will play the root note and one violin will do the Alberti bass pattern. And finally, this one is a little bit trickier. Before we listen to it, let's look at it. Our cello is still maintaining her super exciting root note. Sorry, cellist. While the violins have a bar of rest. Then it gets a little more interesting. Violin one begins a copy, an echo, or an imitation of the main theme, which works quite nicely. Then it breaks away from the echo, but still follows the notes of the chord. And then you've got this lovely descending pattern in both the violins, just again to add some interest. So why don't you pause the video for a minute and see which notes belong to the chords and which ones don't. Now let's listen to this fourth example. few good rules to follow. Keep your contour of your harmony line simple. Don't go leaping all about the place. Move by step as much as you can, either ascending or descending. Use the occasional leap just to keep it interesting. And repeated notes are absolutely fine and they can be very, very effective. Patterns are terrific and add a great deal of interest. 
And with your passing notes, try to have them land on the weaker beats of the bar. Maybe don't start a bar with a passing note. Start with a note that belongs to the chord. So strong beats equal notes from the chord. Whereas weaker beats will put our passing notes. So in a bar of 4-4, four, four, for example, strong, weak, strong, really weak. Good luck. Get going and try and write a harmony line.